What's going on guys? So I have 10 very specific designer fragrances that I feel are pretty underrated based on what I've seen over the last several months to a year and some change in the community on social media with the things that I see anyways. And these are just some ones that I really enjoy that don't seem to really get any love. And I'm here to shed a little bit of light on Maybe it'd be something that you're hearing a little bit about for the first time, even if you've maybe seen them on the internet before. I want to talk to you about them. Stay tuned. So the first one, I think from what I've seen, the biggest knock on this one's performance. For me, I get average performance, nothing spectacular. But one that's very overlooked is Upom Absolute. I picked this one up last year. First of all, love the black with the yellow. Really cool looking scheme. So this one, some spices. It's a little ambery. There's an incense note. It's got lang lang in it, but I don't ever really get much of a floral tone. Maybe that's what kind of adds some of this odd brightness for being such a dark fragrance that this one has. Maybe so. Really nice stuff. I believe it's tonka bean that's in here, but you will get a bit of a, a vanilla feel to it. It's not too powdery. It does have a little touch of powder, but it's more so about spice, this amber cord, and incense. Like I said, with this freshness, odd freshness mixed in. Five, six hours on my skin. Some people may get less. You can scoop this one up for a pretty good price. I want to say it's a 90 ml. Four ounce, so even bigger. 120 ml. I paid in the $40 range, 40 some odd dollar range. I want to say I got it from Fragrance Net. It's been a little while, but I smell it still floating in the air. This is a beautiful fragrance that doesn't really smell like every other evening appropriate spicy incense fragrance with a strong vanilla base. I mean, let's call a spade a spade here. This tonka bean smells like vanilla. It's really nice. I'm not saying it's the greatest in its category of all time, but it's a lot better than it gets credit for. And more, sh more people should really give it a shot and see, because you may fall in love with this one. This is kind of a hidden gem in my opinion, because it just gets no love because you can't always trust what you read on the internet. Hell, you can't even completely 100% trust what I'm saying here because my experience as I say many times to you guys, might not be your exact experience. So I don't know how easy it would be to try this, guys. Let's call, let's be honest with one another. I don't know how easy it would be to sample. But if you have a way, if you have a friend that can make a decant online, there's somewhere you can find decants, you know, somewhere that sells you fragrances that has testers. I don't know. Maybe get your nose on this one. You might end up really enjoying it because it surprised me and continues to surprise me how good this actually is. Again, it's Yup Om Absolute. Next is what I deem to be the most wearable in this line. This is one of my favorite designer lines, one of my favorite Armani lines. It's Emporio Armani Stronger With You Freeze. This is one that, you know, a lot of people will say is underwhelming and so on. And look, my first impressions of this one, because I blind bought it, I was like, yeah, it's fresher than the original. It doesn't have that warm, cozy, spicy tone of the original. This one's much more fresh and spicy. But it's kind of like, eh, it's okay. It's nice. But it's not wow factor. And then the more I wore it, I just fell in love with it. This is the one I wear the most. I'm not saying it's my favorite in the line. Absolutely has become my favorite in the line. But this is year-round stronger with you. This is better than what replaced it. You can still find this one for a good, good price. I'm going to have links to everything as best I can find down in the description for anybody that wants to try to you know get their hands on these. This one. Man, it's that Stronger With You DNA just freshened up. It doesn't have that warm, ambery, cozy, warm, spicy feel. It's more fresh, spicy, a little sweet and playful, a soft, woody tone. You don't get a whole bunch of the chestnut. Um, like I said, it's just not warm. You take the EDT, which is warm, you make it fresh, you get freeze. Really underrated in this line. Performance is above average, not a monster. Definitely not as strong as a, most of the other ones in the line, but... Far from weak and well above average has been my experience. So maybe get your nose on this one if you haven't yet. Like I said, don't just go off of stuff you see on the internet, including mine. Get your nose on this one. Because it's become one of my favorites, especially in the designer realm. Strong with you, Freeze. So the funny thing about this next one is somebody mentioned it the other day. I think it was in my live stream. Um, I haven't worn this one in a while. And I think I'm going to throw it back in the rotation. This is a great signature scent. This is one of those daily wear business professional fragrances that can set you apart from your coworkers. This is pink pepper, citrus, very smoky, while still maintaining this metallic tone because it's a violet leaf fragrance at its core. It's Givenchy Gentleman Only. That's right. 
One you never hear anybody talk about, especially not anymore. It's so good. The Violet Leaf really stands out. This is one of the better Violet Leaf fragrances out there. And it's still relatively easy to find. It's not super expensive. Kind of the forgotten favorite, because there was one time when this was a favorite among many years ago. And the birch here, and I believe there's an incense. There's cedar is the woody note that's here. It's a little musky, but it's a clean musky feel. There's this creamy tone to it from some resin that's in here, but not a dark resin. I want to say it's an Elemy resin, if my memory serves me correctly. This stuff is actually very nice. Inoffensive, but a little different out the norm for your daily wear type of scent. It's not too heavy to where it works fine in high heat, but it's also not so fresh and light that you can't wear it in the winter time like I'm currently experiencing. I know not everybody in winter is getting winter weather. I get it. Super underrated. Like I said, the forgotten Givenchy Gentleman fragrance. Givenchy Gentleman only and gentle men, not gentle man. So this one has its own set of flankers, but uh, why don't we check this one out? I'm sure you could secure a, a sample somewhere online or maybe a decant. Or if you see it out somewhere, maybe at a Givenchy store, something along those lines. Where if then they have a tester, spray it on skin, spend a little time with this one. You business professionals especially, this is a great daily wear for you guys. Givenchy Gentleman only. Next is a gorgeous lavender-based fragrance that doesn't get enough love. It's one of the better Boss Bottle flankers to ever come out, in my opinion. It's Boss Bottled Infinite. A lot of beautiful lavender. Not a cloying, cheap-smelling lavender, either. And I think because it's so counterbalanced so well with this olive tree note, it provides kind of this rich, rich almost oily-like feel to it. I get it. It's fragrance oils. I understand the the kind of ridiculousness of the way I'm describing that, but I picture olive oil. I get the vibe of olive oil with this olive tree note, like the smell of a good quality olive oil mixed with lavender, a decent quality lavender, and the original Boss Bottle DNA. It does have that apple cinnamon vibe going. Some woods. Oh, man, mixed with this intensified lavender and that, like I said, that olive oil type of smell. Performance is above average. Nothing super strong here. Average to slightly above average. Um, you can find this one still readily available from discounters for a pretty good price. It's not super expensive. It's in that affordable range. Um, I want to say in the $40 to $50 range is where you can get this. It's a good price point for it. This is another great daily wear scent if you like lavender scents that aren't just soapy fragrances. Ag admittedly, because it's lavender heavy, there is a little bit of a soapy feel to it, but it's not just this shower gel type of vibe or bar soap feel to it. There's more complexity here than you may think. So definitely one to get your nose on that doesn't get any love that deserves more. It's Boss Bottled Infinite. So this one's pretty new to my collection and I continue to enjoy this one. This has become the forgotten flanker of the bunch already. I hear people talk about spicy leather. I hear people talk about bright leather, but I don't hear people talk about Ferragamo intense leather. The iris here is a soft, lightly soapy floral tone. You still get the violet leaf of the original Ferragamo's DNA, the self named fragrance Ferragamo. It still has that. There's this dirt soil type of note and vibe to it. I know that's weird, but it kind of works. It's a little strange in the opening. Still a lot of violet leaf though, but as it dries, it's really pleasing. Yeah, it's a little weird in the top. I can see people kind of being indifferent on how they feel about the opening. But boy, if you just give it a little bit of a chance, there's a little bit of a smoky tone in the backdrop. If you just give it a little bit of a chance and let it hang out on your skin. Go on about your day. Just forget you sprayed it and just go and maybe revisit in an hour or two or when it forces you to revisit and you get this light, this nice whiff of the aroma that's coming off of your skin and you're like, you know what? That's actually pretty good. That's going to be a lot of people's experience. You just got to give it that chance. Nobody, I mean, not nobody, not too many people give it that chance because this is a strange fragrance. Um, there was excitement when it first came out, I want to say about two years ago. And the excitement kind of just killed over, but I kept it on my want list and my wish list, and recently I got it finally. And you know what? When it comes to kind of out-the-box thinking for a designer fragrance, I think this one did pretty well because it's a little out-the-box, but it starts coming back to being more grounded towards the original's DNA as it dries. It's quite the nice twist on the original fragrance. Again, that's Ferragamo Intense Leather. This next one's a spicy, woody, amber-based fragrance. There's a little bit of cypress here that kind of brightens up that opening. That's where your freshness is going to come from. 
but it's got a soft leathery tone to it. Very, very amber accord dominant. Like it's very warm and ambery and nice and spicy. I believe cardamom's the main spice here. We're talking about Mercedes Benz Man Private. There was a time when this got plenty of love a few years back, but the love faded and nobody talks about it anymore. And it's still it's just as great as it was three, four, five, six years ago, however long ago it was, where this was getting some praise. It's a great fragrance to pick up in the fall and winter time. I was lucky enough to have a viewer downsizing his collection that wanted to repurpose this and send it to a good home because he knew I had interest in it. But this is awesome. This is just as awesome as I had hoped it to be. Like I said, if you like spice, it's woody. There's some patchouli, but it's more of a woody base. I want to say it's cashmere wood and cedar wood are the main woody notes. There may be a third. I'm trying to... But I know there's this soft leathery feel. It's very amber heavy, like I said. Um, even though it's not a real amber note, obviously. It's just so enjoyable to smell and a lot of cardamom here it's a dominating cardamom smell i think that kind of helps kind of work that spicy ambery feel i think that's the only spice or maybe the main spice i'm not 100 percent sure um, i haven't looked at the note breakdown in some time but this one performs really well it can knife through the cold very easily not the best thing for warm weather i would steer clear of this in warmer weather but in cooler weather or evenings out and you want to make a statement that doesn't smell like 10 or 15 other fragrances that you have i want to give this one a check it's mercedes-benz man private Next is a cheapie made by my main man, Claude Deer, perfumed by my main man, Claude Deer, as I came to find out later, that upon blind sniff when I bought this at Burlington, I was very much impressed. Walks kind of a path of ultra red man and ultra zest. Without being exactly the same, this is fresher. There's some apple and some orange at the top. This is Vince Camuto Solar. I really dig this one. I think this has become my favorite Vince Camuto fragrance, even over Ohm, the blue label, which has always been my favorite. This is beautiful. This is much more of a woodsy take on that style. Um, there's a little bit of an herbaceous feel. It's soft and spicy. I believe pimento is one of the spices. It's a little creamy. I want to say that there's some patchouli that provides this earthy, creamy tone as it dries, but it's very woodsy, soft, woodsy, uh, might even be sandalwood, but a nice spicy tone that's neither too warm nor too fresh. It's just got this nice spicy coating to the aroma, I guess you could say, that kind of counters the sweetness of this fruity tone from this mandarin orange. I believe it's a mandarin orange. I know there's an orange note. I believe it's mandarin and apple. Though it doesn't smell much like apple, it's more orange than anything else, hence the color scheme. And performance is nothing spectacular here, I have to admit. But 100 ml, I picked this up for 25 bucks at Burlington. I think that's an awesome price point for this fragrance. It's like a four, five, six hours if you're lucky and spray your clothes. But four to five hour fragrance that just smells absolutely wonderful. Now, those of you with drier skin, you're probably going to get worse performance than that. So, I mean, think about it. If you can find it for 25 bucks, can you really complain? As long as it lasts more than, I guess I would say, three hours. That's definitely money well spent and... Uh, I think this one is super, super underrated. I know it's been out for years now, and I'm very late to the party. But until I got it, I haven't really heard anybody talk about it. Hence why it was flying under my radar. This stuff is good. If you see it out at your rack stores, I would say it's worth a dice roll for 25 bucks. Definitely underrated. Vince Camuto, Salar. Now, based on never seeing Sin of the Day post across social media, I'm starting to think I'm one of the few that really likes this fragrance. I know in my live stream... I want to say yesterday at the recording of this, or two days ago, one of my last live streams, somebody said it was their scent of the day. So I know I'm not the only one. But when it comes to Victor and Rolf Spice Bomb Night Vision Eau de Parfum, I don't think this gets the love it deserves. This is reworked from the original. I know the original was kind of, you know, redundant to a lot of people's collections because the opening is very Invictus-like and settles down into the Spice Bomb DNA with these spices. Whereas here you have pistachio, nutty notes, this creamy nutty type of tone to it this one's good and it's a monster performer for me too god this smells so good every time i smell it it smells better than the last time to me i'm telling you so underrated guys get a sample of this one get a sample of this one this might be the best smelling for this is I'm, I'm just gonna say this is the best smelling fragrance in this video to me not everybody's gonna agree i understand that that's why it's underrated that's why it's underrated, because not everybody agrees with me on this one. And hey, all is fair. But give it a chance. If you've been on the fence about it, 
maybe he never really gave it any serious thought on should you try it, would you like it. Next time you're somewhere that they have Victor and Raw fragrances, it's still in production as far as I know. They should have a tester. Spray it on your skin. Be mindful, though. It's very strong. It's one of the strongest performing. It's up there with Extreme. Uh, this is might even be more powerful than Extreme. This is one of, if not the strongest, Spice Bomb Flanker. It smells awesome. I've even worn it in the summer. It is heavy on the heavier side. It's a little much for the summer, but I've worn it in Houston, Texas, high heat. You can wear this one year-round and get away with it. You don't need a lot of sprays. It is beastly. It's a compliment getter in my experience. And it's pretty versatile. There's a playfulness to it without being too juvenile and youthful. So at any age, anybody can wear it. I've worn it to work. I've done all these things with it. Get your nose on this one. Criminally underrated, in my opinion. Victor and Rolf Spice Bomb Night Vision EDP. So this is one of the Rack Store darlings from last year for me. I picked this up. I want to say it was 30 bucks for 125 ml, and I went on a stretch of wearing it religiously for a few weeks. Really dig this one. It smells like cool water intense, but fresher. It's grapefruit and sage, the cool water flanker from Davidoff. That's right. It's a simple fragrance. Pretty linear, pretty straightforward. It's got a little bit of this musky tone and light, fresh, spicy, aromatic feel from the sage. The sage wears a lot of hats here unless they're just not telling the whole story in the notes. It's a creamy grapefruit in the top. It's not zesty. It's not sharp. It's not tart. It's a creamy grapefruit. And like I said, there's this light, fresh, spicy tone. It's very aromatic and dries into a slight musky tone. Like I said, if there's more, if there's not more than the two notes, which they're saying it's the two notes, which I don't believe, then the sage would have to wear a lot of hats here, like I was saying. See, it's so pleasing. It's so easy. This is one of those fragrances that's just easy, guys. What do I mean by that? We, we've wore out the term dumb reach, easy reach, all that stuff. Easy. Everything about it's easy. It's easy to wear. It's easy to like. Performance isn't terrible on it. It's going to be easy to want to enjoy this fragrance. If you see this one at the rack stores, because it's shown up at a bunch of rack stores, Burlington's, Marshall's and TJ Maxx. I've heard people find it at Ross, Nordstrom Rack. You see this one out there for $30 or less for this 125ml bottle, 4.2 ounce. It's worth a shot. It's not deep and complex with this amazing scent characteristic and scent profile that just wows people. No, it smells really freaking good. It doesn't smell like everything else out there, though you will be reminded of a few things. Obviously, it is a designer fragrance. But it's just easy and underrated. doesn't get the love it deserves. I enjoy it quite a bit. And when spring rolls around, I'll be wearing it again. Davidoff Cool Water Grapefruit and Sage. This last one. Some of you are going to heavily disagree with me. And that's fine. Because I think I'm one of the few in the proud. I've always liked this fragrance. Admittedly, the Eau de Parfum is better. I'm glad to finally have a 50 ml of this. I'm going to start wearing it uh, much more when the spring rolls around. But... I think it's criminal to hate this fragrance gets. Dolce Gabbana K Eau de Toilette. Yeah, some of you might even be laughing right now. It's all good. You don't have to like it. Citruses, blood orange, juniper berries, geranium. Juniper berries and geranium and citrus is going to be the main takeaways here. It's a little woody. There's vetiver and cedar. It's even a little powdery on my skin. I don't know what to attribute that to. Could be the lavender, could be the sage. I don't know. It's bright, it's soapy, it's clean. It's got a bit of a shower gel feel, but it doesn't smell like every shower gel. The shower gel term that you hear me use, it doesn't just smell like every other shower gel type fragrance. It does kind of have its own thing going on. Again, the Eau de Parfum is better, it's richer, it reworked the scent profile a little bit better. But if you like juniper berries in a fragrance, because this is dominant with juniper berries and geranium, that's your two strongest notes here. That's where you get your freshness from this geranium. It's a bright, minty type of geranium. Nice, aromatic juniper hit. Very aromatic fragrance. I mean, there's a lot of There's clary sage, lavender, and juniper berries here. Full of aromatics. It's bright, it's clean, it's fresh, it's soapy. I don't understand why more people don't like it. I guess because it got the boring tag right away from a lot of people. Um, and people are 
much more easily influenced than I ever thought they could be when it comes to fragrances. It's guys, you might really like this one if you get out and try it because pretty much every fragrance counter at department stores that sells Dolce & Gabbana fragrances, they have this. They have this. Don't just spray a test strip. Don't just take somebody's word for it. Don't just, don't just take my word for it. I've said this multiple times in this video. Get out there and try it. When it comes to designer fragrances, especially ones like this from Dolce & Gabbana, they're easy to get out and spray a tester on your skin. Spend a little time with it. Your girl may love it. That would be a big selling point, wouldn't it? If your girlfriend slash wife or whatever really enjoys how this one smells on you, I bet that would change your thoughts and feelings, wouldn't it? But you know what? Maybe it isn't that bad. Because it's always nice when your significant other can appreciate something you're wearing. Even if it's not your favorite, it doesn't smell bad. It smells really good. I'm not saying you should buy it because your girl likes it. I'm just saying that's usually a bonus, right? I tend to want to wear more fragrances more often when I know my wife really enjoys it. It usually checks an extra box for a fragrance. So, again, I'm not saying that's going to be the case. But there's always potential. If you don't get out and test these fragrances some kind of way, you just won't know. You can't just go off of online opinions, whether written or in video. Just saying. None of us that talk about fragrances on the internet are the end-all, be-all. It's all just opinion based off of our experience and the way we feel about fragrances. And mine seems to buck the system a bit when it comes to this one. So, again, I'm not saying it's the best thing they've ever put out. Far from the best men's designer fragrance Dolce & has ever put out. But I think for the hate it gets, it's very underrated and I think undeserved. So get out there and try it. Give it a shot. You're going to see it in my weekly rotations come the spring. Dolce & Gabbana K, the Eau de Toilette. Well, I think I had a fairly well-reasoned argument for most of these. Some of you are still going to disagree and that's totally fine. Again, it's all just my opinion, my thoughts, my feelings, and my personal experience with each of these fragrances. And until next time, do me a real quick favor, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, because I do appreciate all the feedback and I love hearing from you guys. What out of these 10 have you tried? What do you think about them? Do you disagree? It's all good. If it's not for you, it's not for you. There's fragrances that are just not for me that some of you probably really, really love. And uh, if you have tried them and you do have a similar opinion to mine, absolutely love to hear it. Like I said, both sides are welcome. Keep it respectful with one another, and it'll be all good in the hood. You know what I mean? And until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of these 10, you just give them a chance. You give them a spray now, you might end up thanking me later. Have a good one, guys. Yeah.